Okay, Lamar's going to throw the ball in over to the Devin Williams. Devin Williams over to Michael Manette. Michael looks over to Devin. Devin fakes a little bit. Shake and bake. Here we go. Oh! Devin Williams! Oh, my goodness. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the 15th episode of New Mexico is a Basketball State podcast. I'm Russell Lee Grule, and I'm your host. Uh, today is a, is an episode that I think we've all been waiting for the top 10, my top 10, the NMAA top 10. So I, I definitely want to get through some stuff first, as far as, uh, the season is concerned, cause there's been some recent news and some things to go over real quick. And then we're going to go into the top 10, that second take. So recently we just had, uh, some coaching changes. Terry Darnell of Bernalillo has retired. That, that's been announced about um, about three weeks ago. So that job opening is, is up. District 6, 4A, Bernalillo will be looking for a, a new head coach to uh, lead the Spartans. So that's exciting news. Anytime there's uh, potential changes there, see who they hire. And uh, I just found out... Um, about a day or two ago of this uh, filming that uh, Albuquerque High has let go of uh, Greg Brown as their head coach. So that job, I imagine, will be open here pretty shortly. So we're going to find out some stuff there and uh, find out uh, who they hire next and uh, the reasons why they let go of Greg Brown and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm still very short on the details, so I, I really don't know what's going on there. But those two coaching hires have happened. Uh, those two coaching changes have happened recently in, in the prep news. Uh, and I want to get to another thing uh, that's that's sad. That's that's not really uh, something we all like to talk about. But uh, unfortunately, former Bosky Prep star Elijah Davidson, who uh, was playing at Western Colorado, has uh, passed on uh, this past Wednesday of this month. And uh, no details as to the who, what, when, where, how, and why. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see and uh, respect the family's privacy in this matter. But it, it is sad to see a young person like Elijah go like that. Um, and, uh, you know, just keep your prayers for the Davidson family and definitely want to remember them. Uh, he was in North uh, All-Star, I believe, uh, two years ago. And he was also in my top 10 uh, two years ago before the thing happened. And so uh want to keep them in prayer. And uh, best wishes. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure where you can uh, contact them to send flowers or funeral information. So uh, just keep posted on that, and uh, and I'm sure that stuff will come up soon. And uh, so it, it is. It is definitely sad. And um, so keep them in prayer. Now our, our next thing is uh, the state championship games in 4A Highland High one. The first state championship in 50 years since 1972. So that's really exciting for the Hornet family. And that's really exciting for, um, for, uh, you know, Albuquerque in general to see a school like that that hasn't won in forever finally get one. And they were led by Jose Murillo, who was extremely solid and did some great, great things. And so that's exciting. In 5A, Volcano Vista remained undefeated and was able to overcome Las Cruces High and win the state title in overtime. And uh, that's another one that's uh, that was a really intense game, raw emotions, that sort of thing. And uh, I want to talk about that game just a little bit here. Um, at the beginning of that game was a technical foul for Duncan and warmups issued to Las Cruces High. And uh, I looked up this rule because I thought it was kind of odd. I hadn't seen it in decades or I hadn't seen it in years, honestly. And it, it appears that high school is the only one that has this rule anymore. The um, NBA, NCAA no longer have this rule. I don't think the NBA has had this rule in decades. The NCAA, I believe in 2015, has moved on from it. And uh, it appears that this rule doesn't really have much merit at all, to be honest with you, when you look at it. Because the arguments are that somebody might get hurt somebody um, 
might uh, it might be showing up the other team yet the high school uh, association national federation of high school associations has a rule already in place that states that uh, there will be no showing up of the other team or intimidation and things of that nature so that rule basically covers what this rule may have been attended to cover but essentially this rule goes back to the 50s and 60s and to me it looks like a sacred cow and it's a rule that basically doesn't have much merit anymore probably shouldn't even be in the game because it's before the game and it doesn't even affect the game several teams in college such as Kansas State have uh, have been affected by this rule and eventually it was uh, done away with by the NCAA. So I really don't think it's uh, a rule that needs to be around anymore. And there's quite a few people out there that agree with that assessment. As far as um, things go in the game, it was a very intense game. I mean, if you if you look at the journal reporter's Twitter feed, he would have you believe that Isaiah Carr was using everybody as a stepladder or uh, if you look at the uh, Las Cruces media, uh, Isaiah Carr was not able to get post position or allowed to. Uh, so there's two sides to every story. But I'm going to give you my take on it a little bit. Uh, the X factor in that game was freshman, volcano freshman sensation, Kenyon Aguino, who uh, hit threes from outside, about three or four, I believe, in the game. And uh, he was the X factor, really. And it got to be a very physical game. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, collisions, so to speak, happened in this game. They they sort of let them play, so to speak. And it got to the end, and Volcano had been able to maintain a, a steady lead throughout the end until the end, when William Deuce Benjamin, when you look at the play-by-play, -play, was able to wheel his team back along with Isaiah Carr's contributions they were able to grab the lead at the very end and it looked like they might pull out a victory and then Jaquan Hill was able to get a foul and uh, make the the first bucket to get close to hit the two free throws to send it to overtime and then uh, things tended to go Volcano Vista's way in overtime and they would come out as state champions so it was a pretty wild game in this in an essence and what's interesting about that whole scenario is that Jaquan Hill hit the bucket before he hit the two free throws which means basically he scored four points to put his team uh, at regulation at uh, tied up to go to overtime and he also did that against La Cueva in the regular season. So that's twice he's done that. So he's been very ice water in the veins, so to speak. And so Volcano Vista was able to close it out and, and win the state championship. And um, Robinson in 3A won a state championship. Manal with Dan Gale won a state championship. 2A. Manal won their first title ever. Their school that was established in 1896. So... It's been a hundred and plus year drought for Manal and Dan Gale, who I believe is an Englishman who coached pro ball. In fact, he was being considered by the Bull Snakes. He won a state championship for Manal. And so he's definitely an up and comer, somebody to keep an eye on in the coaching community. And in 1A, Magdalena repeated as state champion back to back and so they're really building a solid program Magdalena is he um, Magdalena was able to win um, was able to win twice back to back and also defeat a 4a school in grants during the regular season so they're building a really nice program so that's all exciting stuff going on and as far as everything else goes it's been a great season I logged uh, about over a thousand plus miles of driving. I went to Las Vegas this year to the Stu Clark Invitational and that was fun and that's a really good a tournament to check out and you definitely see a lot of great northern new mexico teams up there at the stu clark at new mexico highlands university i also went down to los lunas santa fe a couple times and i even made las cruces twice i i went to see las cruces at the beginning of the year to play chapman high school out of texas who was the number eighth ranked team in 5a texas and to put that in perspective 
5A in Texas has over 300 schools. When you look it up, I mean, it's it's pretty impressive. And they're all the size of La Cueva. And uh, for Chapman to be ranked 8th in that uh, classification is very impressive. With K.J. Lewis, who, by the way, signed with Arizona. And now, when you look at all of that, when we're talking about signings, we've got some interesting things that have happened. Uh, Chris Jans has left New Mexico State to go to Mississippi State. Uh, it, it is, for Aggie fans, that's interesting news. For New Mexico basketball fans, uh, what does that mean? Well, Mississippi State had offered Amari Brown, Greg Brown's son, Amari, who probably would have played at Cibola this year, who's playing in Atlanta, had an offer from Mississippi State. So that might be up in the air. We don't know. Chris Jans was offering William Deuce Benjamin at New Mexico State. And William Deuce Benjamin, of course, plays for Las Cruces High. So now that he's gone, they've hired a new coach. And I'll have to learn to pronounce his name. He came from the JUCO ranks from what it sounds like. I have very little details because it was announced today. And uh, today is Sunday, of course. So we'll find out where that where he tends to lead the program and if William Deuce will still have an offer from New Mexico State or whether Amari Brown will still have an offer from Mississippi State. So this is an interesting development here. And it's amazing how things start to change. Another exciting thing is Jose Murillo has signed with Eastern New Mexico, along with his former running mate from Highland, Arraso Corion. Uh, who played two years ago for Highland. He is signed with Eastern New Mexico. So Brent Owens, head coach at Eastern New Mexico, is, is uh, stockpiling some New Mexico kids. So that's really exciting news. And with everything else going on, it uh, is now uh, summer ball. AAU is out there on the scene. I believe ABC is out there. Albuquerque Basketball Club is out there playing in Las Vegas right now as we speak. Um, D1 New Mexico will probably be out there pretty soon if they're not already. So that a lot of that's going to happen. I'm planning on going on the road this year, uh, this summer, to Section 7 again in Phoenix. I'm hoping there's some more New Mexico teams uh, that apply for that uh, turn tournament over there in Phoenix at the State Farm Stadium. So we'll see what happens. So with that all being covered and we touched on a few things, we're going to get to the top 10, my top 10. Now I'm going to break down a few little things because we got some interesting stuff that happened this year. Albuquerque Prep uh, started this year and they play in the grind session. Okay, that is outside of New Mexico. And this top 10, I decided, is just going to be an NMAA top 10. These are kids that play for NMAA sanctioned high schools here in New Mexico. So that's where the top 10 is focused on. So with that, the ABC Prep kids definitely had some very good players. Dylan Chavez uh, has some offers from Fresno State and also has some um, an offer from Montana State. You have Marcus Wilson, who has an offer from Fresno State, I believe, and also from UNM. And he's also rated, rated in the uh, ranked in the top 50 of the grind session. So that's very impressive. And then you also have uh, Gideon Harris, who's been making some waves. And you have some a few others that are doing some great things also. So just to give them a little bit of recognition. So now I'm going to get to the th thing we've all been waiting for. And that is the top 10. NMAA top 10. My top 10 best players in the state of New Mexico. So stay tuned for that. All right, William Deuce Benjamin is the number one player on my top 10 of Las Cruces High. William Deuce has just been a general this year for the Bulldogs of Las Cruces. This guy has averaged 25 points a game, 85% from the free throw line, 34% from three-point land, and he's got range for days. And he's just done a fantastic job this year. I mean, he's one of the most explosive athletes I've seen in a while here in New Mexico on the court. And he's just been f fabulous. He's just been somebody who's super competitive. 
super competitive. He's a cleaner. He, there's coolers, closers, and cleaners, and he's a cleaner. And he's one of those guys that is going to tell you what he thinks. <laughs> I, I definitely know this. And he's definitely going to go out there and he's definitely going to try to prove it for sure. And he did. Last year, he was really good. This year, he was even better. He's risen up. Uh, he's raised up one more level. And uh, frankly, I'd like to see him uh, go to one of these big D1 schools because I think he has the capability to do that because he already has the competitiveness part down for sure. He's just been solid. He's just been really solid. And, uh, you know, there's a thing in New Mexico. I mean, he's really competitive, and that's what we got to understand. And people mistake here in New Mexico confidence for arrogance. And it's not really arrogance. It's confidence. It's, it's really confident in your abilities and what you can do. And that's what he has. And I think people mistake that about him. And as of right now, he's got an offer from UTEP. Uh, we'll see what happens with New Mexico State and Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas, I believe is offering him also. And I imagine there might be some more. And uh, he's definitely somebody that has to be considered for sure. And we're going to hear a lot more about him in the college scene. We really are. Okay. He's, he's only 18, I believe. And he's going to fill out. He's going to get stronger and he's going to get even better. I mean, he threw down dunk after dunk this season. He's one of those guys, very few guys can get through the lane and throw one down in traffic in a half-court setting in New, in New Mexico, I, I, anywhere really. And he was doing that. He was, he was uh, definitely special and he definitely showed those types of skills and that athleticism. And so that's one of the reasons why I ranked him number one. And he led a team undefeated to the state final and almost doggone nearly won the thing in regulation. I mean, you, you, like I said in my earlier take, he brought him back. He brought him back. He's hit big shots, ice water in his veins. He hit uh, two free throws against Chapman to win that game. And that was a big, big game. Pressure packed, full gym, the whole nine yards. So if you're a college recruiter, if you're a coach that needs a player, a point guard, that is aggressive and that will lead his team, William Deuce Benjamin is uh, a very, very good option. So with that, I list William Deuce Benjamin number one. Now for my next one, here it comes. Isaiah Carr of Las Cruces High. Now, Isaiah Carr uh, has been one of the most fun players to watch for me these past three years. I, I uh, first saw Isaiah freshman year. No, it was sophomore year. And it was against Alamogordo when he had nine blocks. And he was just blocking everything and keeping it in play. And he was just, uh, he was fantastic. He just plugged up the middle. And he was just so aggressive, went after every shot. And uh, next season, he did uh, the same thing and got bigger, stronger. He got faster. And he just keeps improving. And then this year, he was gangbusters. Uh, he showed a, a little bit of mid-range game. He was able to do a few more things with basketball as far as offensive moves. But defensively, he went up even higher. And he blocked even more shots. He had 103 blocks, according to Max Preps, this season. And he was far and, behind, far and away the shot block leader in New Mexico. There wasn't anybody close. He was very, very impressive and he worked really well with his running mate, uh, William Deuce Benjamin. And he's one of those guys that comes in at seven foot. Uh, I believe he might be our, our, our first seven footer since Alex Kirk. And he's going to go off to Grand Canyon University and he's going to surprise some people and they're going to love him over there in Phoenix at Grand Canyon. I, I'll tell you right now, they're going to love him. He is one of those players that I think has been underrated his whole high school career. And he, he's one of those guys that is going to prove some people wrong. And he, he deserves a lot of love. And he definitely is one of those guys you can put on any team here in New Mexico. And they're going to the state championship game because he does so much in the middle. And he's such a big challenge. And he's active. And it's going to be difficult to get a shot off against him. And that's going to be the same thing in college. 
I remember when uh, I watched him and Las Cruces play against Chapin and KJ Lewis, who's 6'4, 6'5, looks like Russell Westbrook athletically and just a guy that's going to Arizona, committed to Arizona. He's a four or five star recruit, a big time player. And he's, you know, he's going to play this summer and you're definitely going to see a lot of highlights from him this summer. Well, he goes down the lane and Isaiah Carr meets him up there in the sky, up in the clouds, and he blocks his shot. It was a foul. They, they, they had a collision up in the air and there's a photo of it and it is so impressive. And that's what you're going to see in college from Isaiah Carr. And I've made a prediction in the past, uh, I believe it was episode four or three or five, one of those episodes here on the podcast where I said that I believe Isaiah Carr will be a top five shot blocker in the WAC, which is the conference that GCU is in. So with that being said, Isaiah Carr definitely, I believe, is number two second best player in the state of New Mexico. And he's definitely someone you should all follow once he gets to college because he's going to have a great four-year college career. I, I got good feelings about that because he's just a big-time competitor and he gets after it and, and you see it. And he wears his emotion on his uh, sleeves and uh, it, it is nice to see. It's, it's a lot of fun to watch him. And I think a lot of people, if they watch him for a little bit and follow him, they'll become a fan. So with that... Let's get on to number three. Number three, three, coming on up. Jose Murillo, coming in at number three. Highland High School. He's a state champion now. And uh, this guy was, uh, he was really exciting to watch this year. He was all over the place. He was the closest guy to Isaiah Carr. And uh, as far as blocks are concerned. And so he, he did a really nice job patrolling the paint. And he was dominant. 24 points a game basically the whole season. He was really good helping his team and uh, you know when you look at this guy he he was a freshman he couldn't walk a chew gum at the same time and he barely started playing basketball in eighth grade and he's come so far and so fast that he has just really made an impact in the Highland program and to get to the state final and to win it all and to carry his team like he did this year was really, really impressive. And you could make a case that he could have been the player of the year, averaging uh, 24 points a game and uh, plenty of rebounds, double figures and rebounds. He did an awesome, awesome job. You could put him on any team in this state and he would definitely uh, make a huge impact and probably get him to the state final also. He's that type of player. Uh, if he can develop a, his uh, offensive game to a point where he becomes unstoppable, really unstoppable if he can develop his offensive game and get outside towards a free throw line and start hitting those types of shots. And wow, he'd be something special, really special. A lot of dunks this year. He was just somebody that really impressed me this year and the way he led his team. And uh, he was just solid. Jose Murillo, I... I, I, there's, there's, it's just so hard to say. It was kind of a surprise, honestly, for me anyways, to, to see what he did this year. I knew he would be good, but I didn't think he was going to really be this good the way he performed this year. He, he really, really carried that team. He was really, really solid. And they did a great job getting him the ball. And he, he showed some new skills that he didn't have the year before. And that was impressive. And so that in itself is what brought me to conclude that, yeah, he should be number three. And uh, I, I was really impressed. That's I, I don't know I, have, I don't know what else to say about him. He was just a lot of fun this year, and uh, a lot of people enjoyed watching him play. He signed at Eastern New Mexico University, and he's going to do some great things over there. And we'll see how he does. He's another kind of player that you're definitely going to want to follow after high school. 
I think that he's going to make an impact at Eastern because he just works and works and works. And he seems very competitive in a different manner than, than maybe William Deuce Benjamin or Isaiah Carr. He just seems very competitive. You can see it in his face and the photos and the intensity that he brings when it's time to do something. And so he's got that special ability going on with him. And we're going to see more of it. We're going to hear a little bit more from him in college. I have that feeling as far as the D2 uh, level is concerned. So we're going to see what happens with him. He's it's going to be fun to watch. And so with that, I'm going to head on to number four. Number four coming up. All right. Here we go. Number four. Jaquan Hill of Volcano Vista at number four. I, uh... It's, it's hard to describe Jaquan. Uh, you see so much talent in Jaquan, and he he definitely brought it this season. He, he definitely went up. and He had that aha moment, and he went up another level this year. He was just, uh, he, he's quiet. I think in the press conference, it was the first time I had ever heard him talk, really. And it, he just had, all, he had a smile. He has a really great smile. And... Because you never see it. You never see it on the court or anything like that. He's just always serious, serious. And he did a he did a wonderful job for Volcano Vista this year. He hit the outside shots. He hit the big shots. He did things that uh, got them the Ws. That's what he did. He, uh, he just seemed to be the one that always carried Volcano Vista. And they deferred to him. He was a leader. That's what he was. That's what he was this season. When he played against La Cueva in that early season game, when he hit that long distance three pointer, he had scored the bucket before. And then he comes back and hits the winning shot. When you go to the state tournament final against Las Cruces, uh, they're down. They're down by about four or so. He hits the bucket, comes back, hits the two free throws, and sends them to overtime. He does the things that are necessary to win, and he, he's definitely a winner in that aspect. He uh, he has this mid-range game, and he brings these certain qualities that uh, every team needs. And he's a quiet leader. He's not a demonstrative leader like, like a lot of other players. And he just gets out there, and he just does the job. And so a, a lot of people like that. A lot of people like that. It, it may be in effect uh it may get him unnoticed at times because of that and uh so it takes somebody to have to look and see that in his game as far as him uh as a basketball player but he he definitely did a lot of great things this year he had an aha moment it, we'll, we'll have to see where he goes to college and where he's going to play he has a couple offers here in the state i believe one from western new mexico and i think there's another one from new mexico highlands somebody will have to correct me on that one i looked and i couldn't find it but i'm pretty sure it happened we'll see but the thing is is that a lot of college coaches need to take a look at uh, jaquan hill because he is definitely a player that can lead a team, that can really help a team, that can really bring forth that kind of leadership quality. And he definitely has that. He's, he's one of those players that definitely can be put in there. He's a, as an important part of a team. If you're trying to win a championship, if you're trying to win at, um, you know, in a conference or you're trying to win, period, that's it period. Trying to win, period. Jaquan Hill is that type of player. And it was a lot of fun to watch him these uh, four or five years. I've, I've taken pictures of him, you know, playing at the park during the time of the thing and, and when they all went out there and things like that and, and see him compete. And he just seems like a guy that just loves the game of basketball and does a wonderful job at it. And he's a great teammate. And it's, and it's really what you can say uh, about him. And it, it's great stuff. And so at number four, Jaquan Hill. Now... Let's head on to number five. Coming up.
Jalen Gore of Hobbs High School coming in at number five. Jalen was a player that I talked about in the preseason and uh, he was one that I mentioned that was getting a lot of D2 offers, was doing really well there, had uh, an offer from Idaho University, a Division One school, and he was getting a lot of attention and he was doing really well in the summer and he definitely had a great season coming in at basically 20 points a game 38 percent from three-point land he did a great job 78 percent free throw percentage he was a big big reason why hops was 20 plus wins with only three losses to one to odessa permian and one to crucis and atrisco so he did a great job there leading his team and being that factor for them as a guard with great handles and so I was really impressed with uh, how he did he uh, definitely gave them a shot at a state title that that's the truth he, he definitely did I hadn't really seen much of him during the season except for online watching Hobbs America which is the uh, streaming service for uh, Hobbs athletics and one thing that always stood out to me was that he was willing to shoot from anywhere. He's got long, long range. And he hit at 38%. And he shot about 85 of them this season. He shot a lot of three-pointers. And that's a lot of, a lot of shooting. And he was very uh, effective from out there. I did try to see him... Uh, play against Mayfield in Las Cruces, but he had a wrist injury. So he was out a couple games, but still, he still pulled out 20 points a game. Still did a marvelous job. He was also doing a lot as far as running their offense, and they had a great team this year, and they did a really nice job there at Hobbs. And Jalen Gore has decided to go to Cameron University, a Division I school, in Lot excuse me, a Division II school in Lots in Oklahoma. So I think he's going to do some great stuff on the next level in college. He was really nice at the All-Star game. He showed some range there. And he was playing against some tough competition in the All-Star game, the best players in the state. And so with that, that's one of my reasons where I think he's going to do well on the uh, college level. He's going to be a three-point shooter on the college level where you're going to you're gonna notice him. If you follow the stats, you're going to notice that he's going to be one of those guys that's going to have his name there because he's that type of shooter. And he did a great job. This year, I just can't say enough about how well they did this year at Hobbs and how they were, in my opinion, a serious state title contender. They fell short, but with Jalen Gore, he, you can't ask for more. You can't ask for more with Jalen Gore. Seems kind of unassuming, but again, I don't know him enough. I've only followed from a distance and it's kind of difficult to do here in the metro when you have a full-time job and you try to follow everybody outside the metro. So even with that being said, I still saw a lot of, of uh, great stuff from him. And so I was impressed. At number five, Jalen Gore. Now let's move on to number six. Number six on the top ten. Here we go. Shane Doma Sanchez of Del Norte High School. Uh, Shane, I got to tell you, is uh, one of those players that is up there in the competitive level where he's just completely working all the time. Working all the time. He came back from an injury, an ACL from what I understand, and he was only able to play half the season. And Del Norte needed him. They definitely needed him as far as uh, getting to the state tournament and even having a chance to win a state championship. He comes back, averages around 18, 19 points a game, does all the things they need him to do, gets to the state final. They did run into Jose Murillo and the Hornets, and they came up short. But he was very solid. He was very solid. He was incredible. He was just doing spectacular drives and doing all kinds of things to win the ball game. Trying everything he could to try to win the ball game. Super competitive. And that's what you need when you want to be really good and when you want to be great. And Shane was one of those guys. Shane was uh, 
and I gotta say this, I'm gonna say this. Shane was picked second team Metro, all Metro by the journal. And uh, I don't know what more he could have done to get the fir uh, first team, because I think he's first team all Metro, to be honest with you. That's that's how I feel about it. I think I think it was kind of a disservice, to be honest with you. But that's just my own opinion, okay? The thing is, is that Shane showed a lot of next level skill, showed that he can lead a team, showed that he can get buckets, showed that he can make it to the next level. He's definitely one of those guys that you should consider as a college player, a future college player. A strong summer, a strong senior season, and we'll see him playing in college. That That's my opinion. And he was one of those guys that just uh, has really impressed me over these last couple of years. I mean, he's been doing it every year, consistently. He's just been really solid for Del Norte. And um, he's definitely one that we need to watch next year and see how he does. Because he's going to be entering his senior season. And uh, I think that uh, I think that people are kind of ignoring him a little bit. But here's the thing. He didn't quite have the explosiveness in the beginning because it's an injury. He's coming back from an injury, but he adds all these other moves and he does all these great things out there and he gets his team to the state championship game. What more could you ask for? What more can you ask for from a player? And so that being said, I think Shane should have been in the first team all Metro. Just my opinion. That's my soapbox on that one. Shane definitely is going to be higher up on this list for sure next season, provided nothing else happens. And I don't think anything else will, because I think he's just going to get better and better and move up another level. And we're going to see it. And I think some people in the media will, will figure that out eventually. So with that being said, Shane Doma Sanchez at number six on the top 10. Coming up, number seven. Here we go. At number seven, Aaron Mora of Hobbs High School. Aaron Mora is a 6'6 center uh, who plays uh, for Hobbs High School. And he averaged about 19 points a game this year and came right there at 10 rebounds a game. So he was doing a double-double this year and doing a great job for the Hobbs Eagles in the paint. He was uh, a very nice compliment to Jalen Gore, who was ranked at number five. I, I thought that he was one of those guys that definitely could play at the next level. And I think that he still can. I think that he uh, just needs to keep uh, finding an opportunity to do that because he did some great things this season. Against his matchup against Isaiah Carr, he got 18 points in that game. Even though they fell short, he got 18 points. He was the X factor in a way when you look at the, uh, the stats and their games and how they played out. And the two losses that they had, Odessa Permian and uh, Atrisco, he, he only had had about a couple points and he wasn't getting the ball from what it looked like as far as the stats are concerned. I, now, I didn't see those games except for Trisco and he was one of those guys that if you get him the ball and you give him an opportunity to perform, he's definitely going to do it because that's going to be fairly obvious as far as the stats are concerned. And I saw him against Mayfield when Jalen Gore was out and he did a great job and they won that ball game. He is one of those guys that I think was a little un underrated coming into this season. You, we didn't really know about him until this year. Last year, I was hearing a, a few things about him, and I just wasn't able to see him yet. I definitely did this year, and he did a great job. Aaron Mora is one of those players that... We definitely want to get behind. He's one of those guys that works hard, seems to be very motivated, and one of those types that's just like what we, the type of player that we appreciate here in New Mexico. And that's, that's kind of how I see it with him. And he was a big reason why they won 20 plus games, 26 games, I believe. And with that, 
I put him at number seven because he's definitely earned it. Hopefully he can get a college scholarship and play at the next level because I think he can. And I hope college coaches see him. Maybe he gets a, a post-grad deal or something of that nature and he can showcase his skills because he can run the floor. He can shoot from outside a little bit and he's definitely a strong defender and he did a nice job this season for them. Definitely. Aaron Mora at number seven. Now coming up, at number eight, here we go. Number eight, Jalen Holland of Los Lunas High School. When I look at Jalen Holland, uh, it's amazing. He's a he's a freshman, okay, and he played varsity as an eighth grader for the Los Lunas Tigers, and it's amazing. It's it's really kind of amazing because he doesn't even play like a freshman. He kind of doesn't even look like a freshman. He's just uh, he's very athletic. It's like I told a colleague of mine. He's very athletic. He hasn't gotten to that point yet where he's going to start wowing you. And I think that's what he's going to start doing this uh, coming season. He is uh, one of those players that shoots from outside very quick, very athletic, gets to the rim and gets buckets. He does a lot of things for the Los Lunas Tigers. In the early season, they struggled without him because he wasn't available because of football and they won a, a 4A state title in football. And so when he comes on board, they finally start to figure things out a little bit and they were struggling. But then they reeled off a 10 plus win game streak to get to the state tournament and they were able to get 20 wins. And that's Jalen Holland for you. He's, uh, he's developing this reputation as a future star here in New Mexico. Uh, they have him listed as 6'1", but he looks a little taller than that. Definitely, definitely uh, somebody that you would pay to go see because it's exciting to see what he could develop into. It's it's still fresh right now, but we, we just got to just uh, you know, sit back, relax, and, and see what happens here because Jalen Holland is uh, one of those people that is showing a lot of potential, and he definitely put in a great performance this year by getting the Tigers, uh, by being a big part of the Tigers' success as far as uh, turning things around because they were struggling, and he's definitely helped turn those things around, and he's put up big numbers, and... Um, We'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I believe he's got an offer from Western New Mexico. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But he's already getting college coaches looking at him. So he's going to be going through the summer and we're going to see what happens. We're going to see how he improves. We're going to see who he impresses. And that's where everything is going to end up. Is where how well he improves because it's a lot of its potential, but he's already shown a lot right now. And even if he stayed this way all the way until his senior season, he would still go to college because he's that good of a player. He is definitely somebody to watch in the future, but he did put in a great season and he's a big part of the Tigers' success. And uh, I, I see him top five. In the coming future, I really do. I, I really see him moving on up. And uh, I see a lot of people heading to Los Lunas to watch their games. And uh, maybe maybe the journal will get down there one day. We'll, we'll see. So that's, that's the thing. Jalen Holland at number eight. And uh, he definitely earned it. And uh, we'll be watching him in the future. So that's exciting. So at number eight, Jalen Holland of Los Lunas High. Now coming up, number nine on the top 10. Here we go. Number nine, Jordan Mirabal of Magdalena High School. Jordan has been uh, an excellent player for Magdalena for four straight years, averaging double figures. 
13, 17 his sophomore year, 28 last season, and now his senior year at 25 points a game. They've gone back-to-back -back state titles. He's had some impressive performances, 25 points against Grants, a 4A school. And this is Magdalena, a 1A school. So that's what, and they got the victory too. Jordan at 6'2", <coughs> excuse me, has been impressive. Has, uh, has just been putting up big numbers, stat stuffer type numbers. You, you look across the board, everything's four, four assists, five rebounds, three steals, five steals. I mean, you go on and on. There's plenty of, of, uh, productivity from Jordan Mirabal. And he's definitely shown that he can shoot from outside. He can get to the rack. He can pass the ball, rebound. He's shown all these different types of skills and he's put up a lot of numbers um, over the years. And he's a name that I've heard of uh, for about three, four years. And I finally saw him at the state tournament and he was impressive there. And he's now got an offer from Eastern New Mexico from head coach Brent Owens. And uh, we'll see if he takes it. He probably should. You know, there's not a lot of offers out there in the, in the world. And uh, there's so many kids in the uh, transfer portal. But Jordan Mirabal has definitely earned it, especially playing at a 1A school. He has just done fantastic stuff. And uh, a lot of people believe that he can definitely play and get a lot of points in 5A. And I believe believe he can too. He's just shown that he's a really good ball player and I've seen him in the summer too a little bit and he did some nice things there. So that being said, there's not much more I could really say about Jordan Mirabal because I didn't cover 1A basketball. I cover 4A and 5A, but he stands out. He definitely stands out. He's the cream of the crop of 1A basketball, and he's definitely somebody who's a top player in the state of New Mexico for sure. And I definitely thought he earned a, a spot on the top 10, on my top 10 for sure, because he, he's definitely put up the numbers and he's won two state titles. You know, at 6'2", he's showing that he's a nice, nice shooting guard or possibly a point guard. He's somebody that he definitely impressed Eastern New Mexico. So with that being said, Jordan Mirabal at number nine on the top 10. Here we go. Number 10, our final, our final player of the night at number 10 coming up here we go and number 10 Damian Perez of Carlsbad High School now Damian is a 6'5 point guard yes I said that right Somebody on Instagram, a young man told me on Instagram, hey coach, there's a kid who's a 6'5 point guard at Carlsbad. And I was, I was like, okay, all right, I, I got to check this out. And sure enough, there is. Uh, Damian Perez uh, was definitely uh, something special. At 6'5, this guy handles the ball really well. He's got those pistol peat fingertips, great hands. Step back jumper, three pointer for range after range. I mean, he can shoot from the logo basically at mid court. Damian Perez has got to be one of those players that's going to be really exciting coming up this summer and this season, uh, this uh, senior season. He's going to be, he's a junior now and he's going to be a senior. So he's definitely somebody we got to watch for, but he had a great season this year and he impressed. He did it against Hobbs and, and other teams in Las Cruces and he, he showed that he can definitely get buckets. And uh, he's one of those people that I saw against the Rio Rancho and I was impressed. He did some great things in that game he, and uh, they were able to move on to uh, the quarterfinal. They, he was a really nice player. He was doing some really nice things. And at 6'5", playing the point guard position for Carl's bat, that's impressive. And getting 20 wins this year, that's impressive. Uh, averaging double figures and doing all kinds of different things. And he's going to be one of those players that uh, we're going to talk about because he's going to have a big season, I feel, uh, coming up. I, I really do think so. And uh, you you look at his hands, they're 
wow. I mean, the ball will come off and I'll say, ah, oh, he's not going to get that rebound. And sure enough, he snags it. And it's like, wow, okay. This guy is definitely a talent to watch. And I put him at number 10 because he's not quite there yet. There's still some stuff that needs to be worked on and he just needs to get stronger. But he put in a great uh, season as a junior and he showed a lot this year. And uh, I feel that he's in the top 10. I definitely do. I feel that he is one of those players that could easily be top five next year and could easily uh, help Carlsbad get to the state final. He, they, they could be a very dangerous team next year with a strong summer of work and development. They could be definitely strong. And um, I really can't say too much more about uh, Damien because the resume is still building. But he's definitely a top 10 player in this state for sure. And I think college coaches will start to um, notice him and start to look at him. It's not... It's not uh, it's it's not uh, too common for somebody of that size to be able to handle the ball that well, as well as a point guard, a shorter person at 6'5 and doing those things and then showing the ability to get your shot and having range at 35, I'm going to say 35 feet or so from three point land. Yeah, I would I would say that that's a pretty rare commodity for a player of that size. In the high school, anyway, so you don't really see that until you get into the top 100, top kind of players and that sort of thing. So we're definitely going to have to look and watch Damian Perez. And I put him at number 10, and I think he's just going to keep on climbing, and he's going to be up there with Jalen Howard and, and Marcus Wilson in the future, for sure, for sure. Definitely a uh, top player. Now, with that being said, number 10, Damian Perez of Carlsbad. And that is the top 10. Stay tuned for my final take. It'll be a quick one to finish everything off and put a cap on the season. We're going to talk about who could be uh, coming up next year. All right, here we go. Okay, that was the top 10, the top 10, the NMAA top 10, and uh, I think it's a good list, and I hope you enjoyed the show, and there was definitely some others that were considered and everything else, and um, I'm going to give a quick take on, on what to expect next year, and uh, just to cap off this season, it was a great season, it was the first full season that we've had uh, since the, the thing, and uh, I, I'm happy we were able to complete it. Um, we've got some great players coming up next year. Ex Exodus Ayers of La Cueva is going to do some great things. I, I, I have high hopes. Jalen Holland, as I mentioned before. Daniel Steverson of Cleveland. And uh, Sean Johnson, a post-grad. He's going to be at ABC Prep, post-grad. And I think he's going to really... I think he's going to burst out. I think he's going to have that aha moment. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and I hope he gets it. And uh, we'll see him possibly get some news about him during the summer. And you got Nick Sanchez of Artesia, who's been really solid. And we could go on and on. There's so many great names. Kai Brickman of Alamogordo. Uh, Cody Vassersteen of Farmington. They're building a really nice program up there in Farmington. Alamogordo is a, definitely another team to watch coming up. Las Cruces, I think, will uh, will rebuild just a little bit. They just got to find some pieces now. But they've got Caleb Carr and they've got David Cruz and Serge Velez. And they, I think they'll, they'll do okay and I think they're going to do fine and Brandon Kiris of Oregon Mountain and uh, Brian Cobb of uh, St. Pius and uh, Albuquerque Academy I think is building a great program and uh, Del Norte will be back and I think they could get back to the state final again for the third year in a row and Highland uh, I think they'll regroup and they'll be solid and uh, they'll definitely compete again because they're building a program over there so there's a lot of great things happening in, in the uh, in the state as far as basketball is concerned. Uh, there's a lot of programs that are developing, and uh, I, I see some trends happening, like the All Star Game, the Red and Green All Star Game. I wasn't too fond of the Red and Green theme, but uh, 
I just wanted an explanation on the north and south why, why it was dropped. I just wanted an explanation when you come down to it. But the red and green was, uh, was a really good all-star game uh, over there at Santa Fe High. Kudos to them. And I liked the jerseys. They looked good. And it was a fun atmosphere. And I think that's something that has the potential to grow. And I'm also looking forward to what Adrian Ortega does at APS and how he uh, puts his stamp on the uh, APS school district as far as Albuquerque is concerned. I think that um, media-wise, uh, we can get a lot better, uh, a lot better coverage. My, I myself included. It means getting out there on the road and driving. Uh, maybe ProView and Primo will start streaming more games outside the Metro in Santa Fe. I'd like to see that. I, I hope that uh, there's somebody starts streaming out of Las Cruces in that area. And Hobbs America, they, Ty Friend, this guy is great as a broadcaster. And uh, I think that's uh, I think that's what's needed is more and more media out there, especially for areas like Clovis and Roswell, KSP TV. Uh, I got to give them a shout out this season. I watched a lot of games on their channel YouTube. They covered uh, Artesia, Roswell, Goddard, and uh, Lovington, and a lot of other schools in that eastern New Mexico area. So definitely check them out if you're interested in seeing what the rest of the state's doing as far as playing and how well they're doing. And uh, we get, we got to just keep growing. We got to get stronger and bigger. The summer is a great opportunity to do that. ABC is out there right now uh, on the AAU scene and D1 New Mexico is going to be out there and they're going to do a lot of great things. Uh, New Mexico Impact. All these different AAU groups are going to be out there developing and playing. And uh, I'm looking forward to going to Section 7 again in Phoenix. I hope, like I said earlier, I hope there's a, a few teams. I hope we get a lot more teams than four like we did last year at Section 7 in Phoenix at the State Farm Stadium. Because that was a great experience. And here's a fun fact. Volcano Vista and Las Cruces both played at Section 7 last season against some tough California and Arizona competition. And it might have it might have been uh, an integral part of their development as teams and how they did this season. So those are definitely things to look at. We, we got to get out there and see how the rest of the country does things. And we got to get out there and compete. And that's how you get your name out there. And that's how you build New Mexico basketball. And this season, I, I started to see a transitional change towards that as far as things went. Because I think we realized uh, what we had lost during uh, the thing. And you always got to keep fighting for athletics. You know, on that point, I want to go this way and tell you that you got to fight for athletics. You always have to fight for music and the arts and you got to fight for all these different activities, ROTC, uh, so on and so forth, because those that are in power tend to look at those as extracurricular and really they're not. They're part of the whole school experience. And when they look at them as extracurricular, they tend to want to cut them and chop them and take them off the block because it becomes a money issue or this and that. And we need to do the best that we can to provide for our kids. And we need to watch what happens in Santa Fe. We need to really pay attention up there and see what happens in Santa Fe at the legislator. And we need to really make sure that we hold uh, the governor, whoever that might be in the future. And we need to uh, hold accountable the representatives. And we need to really look at these people because some of these people, let's be honest, are straight communists. <laughs> I'm serious. And so we've got those issues and we still got to work on a lot of issues within our communities. But uh, on the good note and the high note, we were able to complete a season. We finally got rid of the face coverings, which I'm going to tell you right now should have never been there to begin with. Plenty of data to prove that. Most states didn't have them. We shouldn't be dead last in everything as far as those things are concerned. And we should just start to look forward and do what's good for us as a, as a state. And we got to keep working on that. We definitely got to keep working at that. 
And uh, so we got to get better, all of us. We got to get better, but it was a great season. It, uh, it definitely got us back to what I like to call the better normal. And we can keep improving because don't ever forget what we almost lost because we did, uh, we did lose a lot and we got to work harder now to build back. We got to work harder now and we can't rely on a government to do that for us. But next year, we're going to have a great season. We got plenty of motivated players, plenty of people who've got to prove things who've got something to prove and who have dreams and they're going to achieve them in my opinion. So with that being said, I thank you for watching. I thank you for playing. It's a great season and we'll see you in the summer. You have a good night.